Hi guys, my name is Niv Ashkenazi and this is I for Technique. Today we're going to look at our right hand thumb because this is a very hard thing to see and I was very curious to get to see it in slow motion. The idea for this video has been knocking around in my head for a little while. Some of it is because I've been working with some of my students on their right hand thumb technique and some of it is also because it's hard to find clips on YouTube where you can actually see the right hand thumb, but I did find one. I found a clip of Hilary Hahn playing Sibelius Concerto, and it shows the thumb very well because we're getting a really good angle where we see the circle of the hand, um, and through that circle we can see the thumb technique. It's actually really hard to get a good angle for watching the right hand thumb, and that's because when we're actually playing, the part that we want to look at is right over here, which is kind of hard to find a good angle with the camera. So instead, we're going to be looking through this way to see the thumb. But I'll also show you what I'm looking at away from the instrument. I also found that both as a teacher and when I was studying, thumb technique was something that was easily missed. We get to see these four fingers a lot, but it's hard to get to actually see the thumb. So a lot of the times, the thumb gets missed for quite a little while, so I wanted to talk about it a little bit. With the thumb, we want it pointing in and downwards a bit. And this is how we're getting the push and pull that a lot of people talk about. We get it with the thumb. The thumb pushes against and then pulls against the bow. And the motion, though what we'll see, it looks like it's coming from this first joint but really it's gonna be coming from this second joint. So the motion that we need to see is like this from the second joint. Now, I did not know the names of these joints. I actually had to look them up. So this first joint is the interphalangeal joint and the second joint is the metacarpophalangeal joint. For the slow motion clip, I decided to play the same section that I saw Hilary Hahn play that had the really good angle that I linked down below. The reason for this is it's all on the G-string, so it makes it easier to find a good camera angle to see into the palm of the hand. Since this section focuses on small bow changes right at the frog, we get a lot of bow changes that we get to see. So we will really get to see the circle that we want to see in the hand at the frog and how it changes to a little bit more closed because of the actual bow changes. So we'll get to see that motion. We'll get to see a lot of motion in the fingers, at least some of them. And this will be a good way for us to look specifically at what is going on with the thumb and the entire hand when we are looking at it from this angle. So let's look at the right thumb in the Sibelius passage. And what we see is that there is a lot of pressure on the thumb. The thumb where it touches the bow is a little bit lighter. It's not as red over there because there's actually a lack of blood flow there because there's so much pressure. So here we can see what is called the push-pull on the bow with the thumb. So we push on the bow for down bows and pull on the up bows. Now, I didn't really know the names of the actual joints for the thumb. I had to look this up. But our first joint, the one that is easy to see over here, that's called the interphalangeal joint. And the one that we can't see, which is the second joint that's on the other side where the palm starts, that's called the metacarpal phalangeal. Now, it may look like there's a lot of motion in the interphalangeal, but really the motion's coming from the metacarpal phalangeal. So if you look very carefully, at where the thumb actually connects to the rest of the hand, you'll see that there's a lot of motion coming from over there. Now, the other reason that I really like this angle, this is an angle that I actually like to look at 
when I'm teaching my students just to see how their thumb is working and how their fingers are working. And this angle is really good for seeing the finger motion, not just of the thumb, but also of the pinky and the ring finger. Now the rest of the fingers are also moving a lot. We just can't see them, but we can really see how much motion there is in the pinky and also in the ring finger. I also like to talk about the circle that we have at the frog between the thumb and the rest of the fingers. If you look at the outer outline, basically the pinky all the way through into the thumb kind of creates a circle when it's at the very frog. And then right when the, the bow changes to go back to a down bow, that's when the circle kind of scrunches a little bit. It's not always a perfect circle, but that circle gives a lot of power to your bow strokes because you can use that circle as a means to exert pressure onto the bow. Especially when you couple that with pronation, it really gives you a lot of control over the bow. So that's why I like this angle as well. You can kind of see the inside of the hand and exactly how the bow functions both for down bow and up bow bow changes, especially at the frog, at a pretty fast pace too. So the things that I think are important to focus on with the thumb is really the placement of the thumb, how active it really is, which is very, very active, and how it relates to the other fingers. And I think actually finding a way to see this angle on yourself or on your students is a great way of checking up on the thumb and seeing how it's functioning and whether it is sliding or whether it's in exactly the right place and how much it's actually moving. So I hope this video was useful and you got to see a part of violin playing that's actually harder to see and that we normally don't get to focus on as much. And if there's something that you would like me to specifically look at in slow motion and share with you, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your suggestions.